Welcome if you're new and thanks for clicking in. And welcome back to all our new subscribers. We really appreciate you coming back. We have been exploring the great African kingdoms and empires that existed before the arrival of European colonizers. The playlist will be linked below. There is a lot of mainstream knowledge about some of the more prominent African kingdoms, such as the Egyptian Empire, but we are very passionate about sharing the history of the many other great kingdoms and empires that existed prior to European influence. In today's episode, we will be focusing on one of the largest territories and most enduring kingdoms of Africa, the Kanem Bornu Empire. If you enjoy our content, please don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button. We really appreciate your support. The Kanem Bornu Empire was one of the most influential and prosperous kingdoms in African history. It existed from the 9th through to the end of the 19th century. It spanned the region that is now modern-day Niger, Cameroon, Chad and Nigeria. Lake Chad area was strategically located on connecting points of the vast network of Trans-Saharan and Sudanic trade routes. This is where they established their center and rose to power and prosperity due to the control of these trade routes. The origins of the Kanem Bornu Empire can be traced back to the 9th century when the Zagawa people, an ethnic nomadic group that originated from Sudan, established the Kanem Kingdom at the southern end of the Trans-Saharan trade route. They established the first capital at Njimi in Kanem. This area was vital because it served as the crossroads between the north-south trade routes and the east-west trade routes to Nubia. They eventually abandoned their nomadic life and became skilled traders and warriors, which enabled them to establish a powerful kingdom through their control of the Trans-Saharan trade routes. The Kanan Kingdom was ruled by a series of powerful kings who expanded its borders through military conquests and strategic alliances. The Saifawa or Safawa dynasty is the most renowned of all. According to Arab chronicles, the Safawa took over at the end of the mid-9th century, drawing on an ancestral link with legendary Yemenite hero Saif ibn Yazan. It ruled for the next 771 years, the longest reign in history. Their kings were also known as Mai, as they were believed to have descended from a heroic Arabic figure. Because of this, the dynasty promoted and expanded Islamic culture and traditions throughout the empire. By the 11th century, Kanem was ruled by Hume, a Mai from the Saifawa dynasty. Hume converted to Islam and declared it the official state religion. This created a good relationship between the Kanem Kingdom and the Islamic states of Arabia and the Mediterranean world. As a result, Kanem could acquire new ideas as well as literacy in administration. This was an advantage to Kanem. However, many people resisted the new religion as this started a series of conflicts that began to weaken the empire. In the 14th century, Internal conflicts and external attacks had torn the Kanem Kingdom apart. Eventually, by the end of that century, it was conquered by the Bornu Empire, which had been founded by the Kanuri people. The Kanuri were a new people formed from the intermarriage of Kanembu and Bornu people. As a result, the Saifawa were forced to retreat and establish a new kingdom in Bornu at a capital called Ngazagamu. This was the origin of the Kanem Bornu Empire. There, the Saifawa destiny continued as the rulers. The Bornu Empire was even more powerful than the Kanem Kingdom. 
It was able to expand territorially to include parts of modern-day Nigeria and Cameroon, and commercially to be the strongest power controlling the Trans-Saharan trade routes. Under the rule of Mai Dunama Dabalemi, Khan and Bonu created diplomatic exchanges with powerful states of North Africa. He also declared jihad against surrounding tribes and initiated an extended period of conquest over other kingdoms. Under the rule of the Bonu Empire, the Trans-Saharan trade route flourished and the empire became a center for Islamic scholarship and culture. The empire's capital, Ngazagamu, was a thriving city with a bustling market, impressive architecture and a cosmopolitan population. In addition, Mai Ali Gaji extended a period of expansion by significantly taking over the west side of the empire over the Hausa state of Kano. He also captured and held power over the northern trade routes to the Fazan. Mai Aegis Katakamabe also expanded the Bornu Empire and defeated the new rulers of Njimi and retook over the formal capital. With controls over both capitals, the Khan and Bornu Empire had consolidated great power and authority over vital trade routes. One of the greatest rulers of the Bornu Empire was Mai Idris Aluma, Idris Asami, who reigned from 1571 to 1603. Kanem Bornu reached its zenith during the reign of Aluma. According to historical writings, Idris Aluma was the 54th king of the Safawa dynasty. He was an outstanding statesman and a brilliant military strategist who expanded the empire's territory through conquest to include parts of modern-day Chad, Niger and Cameroon. He expanded the Khan Bornu Empire, reaching its most remarkable territorial expansion, covering some of his rival states of Hausa, Tureg, and Tubu. Idris Aluma, like any other ruler of his time, was targeting to expand his territories and gain more power and influence. Being a strategic leader, Aluma employed military conquest and undertook professional training in order to grow his military tactics. He established a new military corps equipped with firearms and trained by Turkish instructors. Additionally, he provided his cavalrymen chainmail, quilted armor and iron helmets and introduced a cavalry of camels as a transportation unit of the army. He also strengthened his navel by building larger boats. According to one epic poem, Aluma is praised for achieving victories in more than 300 wars and participated in over 1,000 battles. He innovated his military to include the use of fixed military camps with strong walls, permanent sieges and scorch earth tactics as well as armoured horses and riders. Aluma also fostered diplomatic relations with Tripoli, Egypt and the Ottoman Empire. In addition, he signed the first recorded treaty or ceasefire in Chadian history. He obtained a guarantee of security of life and property of Bornu travelers in Ottoman territory. He also received cooperation from the Ottoman ruler on a joint strategy to deal with the adversaries, the Turks, who raided his trans-Saharan caravans. Besides, he implemented several legal and administrative reforms that helped to strengthen the empire's government and economy. He desired to ensure his governance strictly followed the religious beliefs and Islamic Sharia law. So he influenced the courts to properly administer the virtues of Islam. He sponsored the construction of many mosques and made a pilgrimage to Mecca. His desire to improve as ruler also led him to seek loyal and competent advisors and allies. His council comprised of the heads of the most important clans. He is also known to have reinforced political alliances through appropriate marriages between the people of one state and another. Under his rule, Khan and Bornu became very powerful and wealthy 
leaving a long-lasting legacy in the history of Africa. Aluma's strong interest in trade and other economic matters led him to greatly develop and improve his empire. He is credited with having cleared the roads, designing better boats for Lake Chad, introduced standard units of measure for grain, and moving farmers into new land. Aluma died in the Bagarimi battle, where he succumbed to mortal wounds. The Kanem-Bornu Empire was known for its strong leadership and effective governance. It had a centralized system of government where the Mai were supreme rulers of the empire who were able to maintain a stable and prosperous kingdom for centuries. The Mai also had a council of advisors known as Dugua who would advise the Mai on matters of policy and governance and also help with making important decisions. Furthermore, Kanem-Bornu was divided into provinces and districts known as Dugu. Each Dugu was governed by a governor or a Dan Galadima. They were responsible for maintaining law and order, collecting taxes and enforcing the will of the Mai. The economy of Kanem-Bornu was primarily based on agriculture, pastoralism and trade. Agriculture was the main activity of the people as they planted crops such as millet, sorghum and beans. Besides agriculture, they also kept cattle, sheep and goats. These animals were being raised for their meat, milk and hides. Also, they were sources of wealth that could be exchanged for other goods or as dowry. Trade was a critical component of the Kanum Bonu economy. Its strategic location on the crossroads of the Trans-Saharan trade routes enabled the empire to flourish due to the wealth gained from trade. Wealth from the trade also enabled the kingdom to gain political and economic influence over regions stretching as far as North Africa and the Mediterranean world. The empire was a hub of commerce, trading goods such as salt, cloth, gold and slaves, among many other items. In addition, Kanem Bornu produced cotton textiles and fabrics that had high demand and were valued in the Trans-Saharan trade. Additionally, Kanem Bornu participated in Trans-Saharan trade of slaves who were destined for the markets of North Africa and the Atlantic coast. According to historians, by the 15th century, Kanem Bornu traded up to 5,000 slaves annually. They traded these slaves in exchange for firearms and warhorse as Mai Idris Aluma sought to strengthen his military. Through trade with North Africa, Aluma established diplomatic relations with Ottoman Empire which gained him access to Turkish mercenaries and advisors who he brought to Kanem Bornu to train his army. Kanem Bornu also had an established system of taxation which provided a steady system of revenue for the empire. Considering how huge its territories were, it collected a lot of income and tributes in terms of goods and labor, and this increased its wealth. A combination of all of these sources of wealth enabled the empire to stabilize its economy and maintain it for a long time. Culture in Kanem-Bornu was influenced by a combination of indigenous traditions and external traditions of neighboring African states and the Islamic religion. The Islamic religion was crucial and played a significant role in the empire's culture. The rulers were Muslim and so they were active in spreading the religion throughout the kingdom and the rest of West Africa. They introduced Islamic education such as the building of madrasa. They offered scholarships to people who wanted to learn the Arabic language. Besides religion, Society was divided into classes, with the ruling class consisting of rulers and administration as the top class. The other class consisted of commoners, a group of traders, farmers and craftsmen. The lower class was for slaves who were used as laborers both for domestic and agricultural labor. 
Additionally, art was a significant part of its culture. Prominent buildings such as the court were known for their elaborate ceremonies and festivals, which often included music, dance and poetry. Also, Islamic calligraphy and architecture were dominant in the empire. The empire was also famous for its military might and successful military campaigns. Its military was primarily composed of cavalry. These were well-trained and well-equipped soldiers who skillfully used spears, swords and bows. They also had infantry soldiers who provided support and protection during battles. One of the key battles fought by the Khan and Bornu was the Battle of Ngazugamu, fought in 1387. This battle was fought between the Khan and Bornu and the Hausa city-state of Kano. It was a key victory for the Bonu Empire and helped to establish its dominance in the region. The Battle of Tondibi in 1591 was also a key battle. It was fought between the Khan and Bonu army and the invading army of the Songhai Empire. Khan and Bonu Empire again won because of their superior tactics and strategy over the much larger army of the Songhai Empire. European involvement in the Khan and Bonu Empire began in the late 15th century when the Portuguese explorers first reached the West African coast. However, it was not until the 19th century that they started to interfere in the affairs of the empire. In the 16th century, the Ottoman Empire became the first to establish a presence in the region. French followed the Ottoman by establishing their protectorate over the region in the late 19th century. The French saw the Khan and Bornu as a potential obstacle to their ambitions of expanding their colonial empire in Africa. As a result, they supported various rival factions within the Khan and Bornu Empire. This involvement eventually caused instability and fragmentation within the empire as it started to lose power and decline. At the same time, rival kingdoms such as the Sokoto Caliphate were continuing to increase their power and dominance over more territories in West Africa. Under the rule of Usman Danfodio, the Sokoto Caliphate was able to challenge the Khan and Bornu militarily and politically. Eventually, it emerged as a dominant power in the region. Despite its many successes, the Khan and Bornu Empire eventually declined in the 19th century due to internal conflicts and external pressures from European colonial powers. In the late 18th century, the Fulani people disputed Bornu's suzerainty over Hausa states. So they made significant invasions into the Khan and Bornu Empire. By the beginning of the 19th century, the Khan and Bornu had become weak and was heading to a decline. In 1808, Usman Danfodio led his military to battle the conquer Ngazugamu, the capital of Khan and Bonu. They won the battle and led to the decline of the Khan and Bonu legacy. However, Muhammad al Khanum could not let go of the fall of their empire, and so he contested the Fulani incursions into their empire. He had put together an alliance of Shua Arabs. Kanembu and other semi-nomadic people. He used this alliance to reclaim the power of their kingdom. As a base of his resistance, he eventually built a capital at Kokawa, modern-day Nigeria, in 1814. However, he could not return the empire to its peak because many other powerful kingdoms had risen and taken over their former territories. The Saifawa dynasty continued until 1846, when the last Mai was killed, ending their long legacy. The Khan and Bornu Empire survived for several more decades before gradually declining due to administrative disorganization, regional particularism and attacks from other kingdoms. In 1893, Rabi al-Zubair from eastern Sudan led an attack on conquered Bornu. A few years later, 
the British overthrew him and took over Bornu. It eventually came to be known as Nigeria. Today, the region once occupied by the Khan and Bornu Empire has a diverse and complex area with a range of political, economic and social challenges. The countries that encompass the parts of the former empire, such as Chad, Nigeria and Niger, are all facing their own unique issues related to conflict, poverty and governance. However, they are also home to vibrant cultures, rich histories and diverse populations that continue to shape the region. In conclusion, the Khan and Bornu Empire was a powerful and influential kingdom that played a significant role in the development of the Trans-Saharan trade route and Islamic culture in West Africa. Its legacy can still be seen in the region today and remains an essential part of African history. If you made it to the end of this video, please give us a thumbs up and leave a comment below. We really hope you've enjoyed this video and learned something new today. We are really passionate about sharing lesser known history of kingdoms and empires, so we really do appreciate all your support and comments. Please check out the description box for more information on how you can further support this channel and please follow us on all our other social media channels.